Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can use your LG TV to jailbreak the PS4. And this, in my opinion, is the easiest and best way to jailbreak the PS4 right now. If you do have an LG TV, because you already have the PS4 connected to the TV anyway, so why not use it to run the jailbreak? Plus, you can also bind the exploits to a button on the remote control. So you can just press a button on the remote and it will run the jailbreak or you can have it set so that when the TV turns on, it will automatically run the jailbreak. So pretty neat stuff. Now you do require a rooted LG TV in order to do this. And that process thankfully is pretty straightforward. It's very easy to root your TV or jailbreak your TV. So we're gonna do that first and then we will get the exploit up and running. So the version I'm using is this version here. There's two versions, the original version, PPLG Pwn. And then there's this one here. This is the project that works best for me. So this is the one that I'm going to be going over here. So first thing we need to do is get our TV rooted. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. There's Root My TV, where you go on the web browser on your TV and you go to the website rootmy.tv and then you slide this bar across and it will root to your TV. Now this is the older exploit, so it only works from like 2016 models up to 2021 models and it depends what webOS version you're on because some webOS versions have patched it. But for most people, we're going to be looking at the other way to root our TVs using this newer vulnerability, which is the DejaVuln or Deja vulnerability dash auto root. So this version here works up to 2023 models, so 2017 to 2023 model TVs. And it looks like it may be patched as of webOS version 8.4. So as long as you're on, you know, something lower than 8.4, then you should be able to do this. And it looks like it's probably patched in 2024 model TVs. But anything older than that, you should be good to go. So you can check your webOS version. It's in different locations on different TVs. But for me, I go into the general settings and then devices, TV management, and then I can look at TV information and it gives me my web OS version, which is version 7.0.0. So I can definitely root my TV. Okay, so all we need to do is download from the releases section here. We need to download the Deja vulnerability auto root.zip. And then we're just going to extract that out to my desktop here. And then we need to put that on a USB drive. Now you want to make sure that USB drive is formatted in FAT32 or NTFS format. I used FAT32, which works fine. So I would recommend that. And then if we go into that USB drive, we're just going to copy all of the files into the root of the USB drive, not inside any pre-existing folders. And then you can eject the USB drive once you've done that and plug it into one of the USB ports on the TV. Preferably don't have any other USB devices connected to the TV while you're doing this, especially storage devices. Now, of course, you need to have internet access in order to do this. That should hopefully go without saying. Make sure your TV is connected to your network over wireless and make sure that you connect the Ethernet cable between the TV and the PS4. And then from there on the TV itself, we can go to the home menu. We can go to the music player. And then from the music player, we're going to find our USB drive and we're going to select the folder that has all of the symbols on it. And if we go into that folder, there's then an MP3 file that has a bunch of symbols on it as well. We're going to select that option and that's going to root our TV. And all we have to do is just wait a few seconds. And you can see there it says the root is complete. It does give you a warning not to have a dev mode app installed or dev app installed. So make sure you don't have that application installed on your TV. That can cause a problem. So make sure you don't have the dev app installed. And then you can go ahead and successfully root your TV. So once the root says it's complete, you can then reboot the TV and you have successfully rooted it. So once the TV reboots, you'll have a new option called the Homebrew channel. So now we're going to go into the Homebrew channel. Once that loads, we can go to the settings option in the top right hand corner. And you can see we have a Telnet server that's automatically enabled. We can use that to install our PPPone exploit for the PS4. You can also enable the SSH server so that you can SSH into it. And I would also recommend enabling the block updates option so that the TV doesn't download the latest system software updates, which could eventually patch uh, the root. So we want to make sure we're not doing that. OK, and I would also recommend staying on the homebrew channel because I've had issues where I'm not on the homebrew channel and I can't SSH or Telnet into the TV. I can only do it when I'm on the homebrew channel sometimes. You can, of course, switch to other applications and the homebrew channel will still be running in the background. OK, so now we need to remote access our TV to set up the PS4 jailbreak on it. 
Now to do this, we need to get the TV's IP address on our local network. So in my case, I can find it on the TV itself by going into the settings and the network settings. And then from the network settings, I can choose the advanced network setup and then I can view advanced information. And from there, it will give me the IP address of the TV, which is 192.168.1.23. So with that, I can actually remote access it from my computer or my phone or any other device that you can run on your local network that has a SSH client or Telnet client. So I'm gonna use PuTTY on my computer to remote access it for now. So what we're gonna do is type in the IP address of our TV, 168.1.23 and we can either SSH on port 22. If we open that up, you can see we get login as, I'll log in as root, and then the password is Alpine, I believe. Yep, and then it'll let me access it. And there we go, we are, we are up and running. Uh, so yeah, it's using the default password. You can also, as I've said before, you can also use Telnet. So if you also want to use Telnet instead, if SSH isn't working, you can set it to other Telnet port 23, and then you will also be able to access it through Telnet. So you can use either one to set this up. So what we're gonna do here is clear the screen and get things set up on this TV. So if we head back to the repository for the PPLG Pwn for the PS4 jailbreak, if we scroll down to the instructions here, we've got all of these commands that we want to enter one by one. We're just gonna copy these commands one by one into the terminal. So we'll copy the first one to change directory to media internal downloads. Then we'll copy the next one, wget, to grab the exploit and get it copied and downloaded to our TV. Then we need to unzip it. So we'll unzip it there. And then we need to change directory to the folder for the exploit, then give the script permissions to run. So we're gonna do that. And then we can actually just run the script right here. So we'll paste it in. And on the PS4, you'll have to go to your network settings, set up an internet connection, use a LAN cable, and then select custom, and then select PPPoE, enter a user ID and password, it can be random, and then just select automatic, automatic, and do not use proxy. So when I press enter, we get the message popping up on our TV, PPLG Pwn is initiated, PS4 jailbreak. And then of course we get our stage zero initialization as it's running. So we're just testing the script right now. We will set it up properly so that you can press a button on your remote control to run it. But for now, we're just testing it to see if it runs because depending on the architecture of your TV, like what type of architecture it's using, whether it's ARM v7 based or ARCH64 based, you might run into an error when trying to run this script, uh, which I will show you how to fix if you do have that problem. And it should, it should auto retry as well. So if it fails, it will retry if it fails to find corrupted object but nope, it found corrupted object. And there we go. I got another message pop up on my screen as well. PPLG pwned. And here we got a bus error. This is the issue I was running into yesterday, uh, which is why this video is basically a day late. But uh, yeah, essentially this project is only designed for TVs that use ARM v7, the ARM v7 architecture. In my case, my TV is an ARCH64. You can find out what architecture you're actually using by typing in uh, uname-m and you can see mine is arch64 now if yours is arm v7 then the script should have worked it should have loaded the jailbreak just fine but if yours is an arch64 like mine then unfortunately you're gonna have to do a couple more commands here to fix this so let me show you how you can fix this issue the bus error what we're gonna do is add a few extra commands that i'll leave linked down in the video description so these commands here, we're basically just gonna download a different version of the Pwn script that is meant for ARCH64 based systems. And then we're just going to replace the one that we have currently on the TV with that version and it should work. And all we're gonna do is copy this and then right click to paste it, press enter. That's gonna grab that zip file. Then we just need to unzip the file. So we'll copy and paste to unzip. And then we just need to unpack the tar which we will do right there. And then that is it. So that should do it right there. We've now replaced the ARM v7 version with the ARCH64 version. So it should now work. So I'll reboot my PS4. Okay, here we go. So we are running memory corruption. So we no longer get that bus error this time. And there it is. We get our notification on the TV itself. LPPLG pwned. 
as well as our gold hen loaded successfully. So that's how you fix the bus error. But if you didn't have that issue in the beginning, it should have just worked when you first ran the script. Okay, so now that we know it works, the next stage is to make this more convenient to run because we don't want to have to remote into our TV every single time we want to run the script. We want to be able to just press a button on our remote control in order to get the script to run. So there's two ways to do this. You can either have it run the jailbreak as soon as the TV starts up. So that way, you know, let's say you already have the TV running and you turn on your PS4, you can just turn the TV off and back on again and it will run the script or you can have it bound to a specific like channel button on the controller. That's my preferred way. But let me show you how to do it on the startup initially because it's quicker. So if you're wanting to set it so that it runs the jailbreak on startup, you've got the commands right here. You just need to edit this file here. So if we copy this, we can type in VI, uh, the VI editor, and then paste in that location and press enter. And this will open up the script. And then it says here, insert this line in the last line. So you would basically copy this right here. So if we use the arrow keys to scroll down to the bottom here, all the way to the bottom of the startup script. And then after this FI here, if you press I, switch to insert mode, you can press enter and then paste in this. And then you can save by pressing escape and then doing a colon and then WQ and press enter. And when you press WQ and you press enter, it will save that file. So then every time you turn on the TV, you will see that the script starts running. That's how you edit the startup file so that it will then run the script when you turn the TV on. What I prefer is binding it to a button on my controller. So whenever I want to run the script, I can just press a channel button on my magic remote and then it will run the script. So this takes a little bit more setup but I do believe it is worth it. So let me show you it here. So what you wanna do is head back into the Homebrew channel on your LG TV. And inside the Homebrew channel, there is an app that you can find called LG Input Hook. And if you select that option and then install that application, wait for that to download and install. And once it's installed, you can then launch it and you'll be able to find it next to the Homebrew channel on your LG menu. So if we run that application, let it load up, it checks for root first of all, and then this will allow you to bind different buttons on your remote control to execute different actions. So when you load this application, you can do everything on the TV itself, but it's much easier to remote into it from another device. You can see it's got the IP address and port number 1842 in green. If you type in that IP address and port number into a web browser on your network, then you can get remote access to it. So I'm going to use my computer because it's just easier to record and you'll be able to see things clearer. So if we go ahead and do that right here on my computer, it will ask for the password that shows up on the TV. I'll enter that, no username required. And there we go, we can get remote access. So now that I have access to this, what we can do is go down to the view logs option and I'm gonna change this to LG Magic Remote because that is the type of remote that I have for my TV is the LG Magic Remote. And then you'll get all of the logs of all the different buttons that have been pressed. And I want to bind it to channel 7 on my controller because I don't have that bound to anything else right now. So when I press 7 on my controller, you can see it shows up in the log. So it says 8, 0 means not pressed and 1 means pressed. So when I press it in, it says 1 and then it goes back to 0 when, I, when I'm not pressing it anymore. So that means that the ID of channel seven on my remote is eight. So I want to bind eight to the script. So it will run the script when I press the seven button on my controller. So to do this, we're just going to go to add a key bind. We're gonna set the ID to eight because we've established that that's the ID for channel seven on my controller. And then for the action, we're gonna select execute because we're gonna be executing a script. So the command that we want to enter here will be linked in the description. It's just changing the directory to the downloads folder where the script is and then launching the script. That's all we're doing here. We've already given the script permissions to run, so we shouldn't have to do that in the command. So we're just gonna go ahead and paste that in here. And then all we have to do is click save changes. And there we go. So if I view the logs now and I press the seven key on my or the seven button on my remote. You can see there it says executing and I actually did get the message pop up on my TV. 
Okay, and there we go. Everything is now up and running. So that is essentially it. The whole thing is set up. You just have your PS4 connected with an Ethernet cable to your TV. And now that we've bound that to the button on the controller, as you'll see here, we've got everything recording. I just press the 7 button on my Magic Remote. And you can see we get the notification that says it's running the jailbreak. And then you just wait. And after a time, it will then jailbreak the PS4. Uh, once it's gone through however many attempts it takes, it will then jailbreak it. And obviously, you can go faster by testing the internet connection. If you want to trigger it faster, test the internet connection. That will trigger it faster. Um, or you can just leave it on the home page and just give it a minute and it will run the script. And that is essentially it. Uh, I do prefer the method of just using a button on your Magic Remote in order to uh, actually trigger the script. You're not necessarily going to want to be running that script every time you turn on the TV, but that is an option. Or you can take the extra step to use the LG input hook to bind it to a button on your controller. So yeah, that is it. A really handy, awesome way of running the jailbreak on your PS4. This is my go-to method of running the jailbreak right now, you know, because I always, I have to use the remote to turn my TV on anyway, and then I can just press the seven button on my remote and run the jailbreak. But yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, as always, please leave a like and a subscribe, and I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.